I usually don't get this excited for updates, but the newest Lightroom 11 update seriously has my mind blown. If you're a portrait or wedding photographer, you need to know about this because it is a game changer in the way that we edit. And in today's Edit Together Tuesday video, I'm going to be sharing a breakdown into the new masking tool along with some cool ninja tricks and also how you can use it to transform your images while also shaving hours off of your editing time. I am so pumped to share this with you today, so let's not waste any time and dig on in. So hopping into Lightroom under the develop area, one of the very first things I noticed was that the menu in the upper right hand corner underneath the histogram, which used to house the local adjustment brush tools, which looked like this, our little brush tool and our radial and linear gradient tools now looks a little bit different. Instead of those tools being right within the menu, we now have this circle icon called the masking menu. And if we were to click it, we'll notice that our brush and gradient tools are now nested under this new masking menu. It also includes our range masks, which I have a previous video I did on color range masks for portraits, which is a really cool tool that used to be a little bit more hidden inside Lightroom and it now has extra capabilities and is also featured, which is nice. But what I'm really excited to talk about is the new select subject and select sky tools. And if we come over to a photo here, these tools are really cool because it's using artificial intelligence to auto select the subject or the background. This is something that was previously inside Photoshop and it's now available right within Lightroom making this a total game changer. So for this photo here, say I wanted to do something only impacting the background. I really love the skin tone of the subjects, but say I wanted an icier green, kind of a cool filmic green in the background while keeping the subjects the same. Something that I could do to really quickly do this is use the new select subject tool and Lightroom will automatically go to work selecting the subject using that artificial intelligence. And if we zoom in here, I mean, just look at this like it gets all the little hairs it's so cool i mean even just like those little details of his beard it's insane something like this would be really hard to do and very time consuming to do so it's pretty crazy it just gets it perfect like down to like the little micro details so in order to get this mask onto the background very simple all we have to do is come over to this little button here invert and we will check that and now we have a perfect selection of the background isolating our subject so that none of the changes happen to the subject and then i can begin tweaking so just like what we would do with our brush tools or our gradient tools we can come over and begin tweaking and once you start tweaking the mask disappears so that you can see what you're doing, which is really nice. So I can come down and just do a couple quick tweaks to the background. And if I were to come up to our mask, which is right here, this is kind of a little pop-up that gets created when we create a new mask. And you can see my mask right here. And there's a little eyeball where I can preview and click it on and off to see what I did. For our overlay, if you want to show the overlay, you can also checkbox this show overlay on or off or use keyboard shortcut O to at any time see your overlay or take it away. There's also this box with more mask controls. I've changed my mask to pink. As you can see, by default, it's red or you can pick any sort of custom color. You can also adjust the opacity up or down or you have the option to go image on black and white or different overlay options and what this is nice for is you can really see what's happening with your mask so if you want a quick check of if any areas are not how they're supposed to be you can use that to do so come over to another image example and this time we're going to go select sky in order to bring in some of that sky detail that is there without impacting the rest of the photo. And as you can see, it quickly brings back in that sky, get a little bit of blue up in there. So as you can see, these can really quickly supercharge your workflow with these one-click selections that make for super easy adjustments. But I also wanna share some kind of ninja tricks using this new tool to take it even further. 
First is the ability to fine tune your mask selection. So if we were to come back over and create a new mask here, we'll go brush tool. So for this image, something that would be fun to do is brush in a little bit of extra haze into that background. In this scenario, the sun went down really early because we were very close to those mountains. It went down probably about 45, 50 minutes before this photo was taken. So it was actually pretty dark and it lost a little bit of that magic that we get from the sun. So by quickly making a little brush adjustment here, I can come in, maybe bring up those shadows a bit, bring up the warmth, and I'm just gonna very messily, like just brush this over the mountains and the background here and make a few quick little adjustments to warm up the image. And so now we have a very like loose brush on our background, but it's also getting the subject. So this is the power of the subtract tool. So here you see I have my selection. I can go subtract and I just wanna get rid of these subjects. And voila, now I have a perfect mask of just that area I painted without the subjects in it. So if we were to toggle this off and back on again, as you can see, it just pops my bride and groom right off of that background, giving that extra bit of warmth and life that we lost with the sun being down. You can also do this to refine your mask so if I were to create a new mask here and let's do select subject again, and it's detecting our subject. And here you can see that it didn't get a perfect mask. It actually left out an arm over here, a little hand here and a bouquet here. So I know I'm gonna invert this. So we're gonna go ahead and invert it in advance. And then we can come back in over here and say, subtract brush. You can also do it the opposite way where you can add if you want the mask to be on the girls. But in this case, I want to alter the background again. So you're actually going to want to invert it first if you're altering the background or if you're doing the people, you can use the addition brush. But you wanna get the selection proper first and then do any sort of addition or subtraction and it works a little bit easier that way. So that's a little pro tip that I figured out. It's hard to invert it uh, if you've already done your adjustments and fine tuning before inverting. But now I can just very quickly go and make those few adjustments to fix up my mask a little bit here in the areas where Lightroom got a little bit confused with the AI, which is probably because of the shrubbery in the background. And that looks pretty good. And now I can come in and do any of the adjustments I wanted. If I wanted to like haze up this background a little bit more and just give it a little bit more of that hazy light and airy look, which it already has because it was shot that way, but it's just emphasizing it and bringing it out even more. Uh, another cool thing is you might notice that this mask menu kind of starts to get in your way. You can either make it smaller by doing that, or you can actually drag this mask menu right into here. And now it lives within the side panel so that it's not in your way while you're editing your images. So we'll go ahead and come over and toggle that off and back on again. And you can see it just pops them off of the background even more and gives even more of that dreamy light and airy look that we love. So next up, I wanna talk about intersection and show an example with color range. So for this image here of my bride and groom's first look, I really loved this train of her dress and say I wanted to bring that out a little bit more even. One of the ways that we can do this is with the intersection tool, which is something that you might not use as often. It might be more of a case by case basis, but it's good to know what it does because it can come in handy if you know how to use it. So we'll go ahead and do select subject to get that nice mask of our bride and groom. And then from there, I'm gonna come into the dot, dot, dot menu and choose intersect mask with color range. 
And what this does is it gives us a color range mask and I'm actually going to come and click choosing the color from her dress. And as you can see, this gets her dress, but it also gets the sky, some of the ground, some of the other areas as well on the image. We'll come in and we'll refine this. So really we're just going to pay attention to them because the rest doesn't matter. So with intersection, the power of this tool is it is selecting two things, right? It is selecting our subject and it's also selecting the color range. And the intersection is where both of those things are selected. So even though the color range is getting the sky in the background, because we have the people selected as well, it's only looking at the color range within the parameters of those people, which perfectly selects her dress. So I think that that looks pretty good there. And then after we have that, we'll go ahead and pop this menu back out so we can see a little bit better. And you can move this anywhere, by the way. You can move it over here if you like, keep it here. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of clarity and bring those highlights down a little bit as well. Pop up that clarity a bit. And Typically, I, I don't use clarity on a lot of images. Uh, I hate clarity on skin. It's not good for skin tones, uh, especially like people use clarity for softening. Uh, the texture tool and other tools are much better for this. Clarity can do some funky things with skin tones, but in this instance, it does a really good job at bringing that contrast and that little bit of pop into our dress here. So let's go ahead and do quick before and after, and it's pretty subtle, but if we zoom in here, you can see it just gives us that little extra pop in the detail of that dress. All right, I have one more thing I wanna share, and I've saved the best for last. This is probably my favorite of all of the new features, and that's the ability to batch sync the AI settings. This has the ability to completely speed up our workflow when editing, especially as portrait and wedding photographers when we're batching hundreds of images. Here I have that very first image that we tweaked the background on. I have a few other similar images down below. If I were to select all four of the images and press synchronize, I'm gonna select check none so that it gets rid of all of the selections and then we're just going to select the masking to select that mask and synchronize that across all four images. And we'll go ahead and select replace so that it makes it just that mask. And let's come over to one of those other images we synced. And so the only thing with this is it doesn't automatically show the settings. You have to come up and click the mask and do update so that it can go ahead and recompute for each image. I'm, I'm assuming Lightroom will probably update this in the future so that we don't have to do this, but it's as simple as coming over to each of these images and just clicking update, and then Lightroom's AI will go through and make that individual mask of each subject in those images even as the subjects move and change in the image, it used to be that you wouldn't want to copy your adjustment settings over unless it was like in an area like the sky, but even that is tricky because different croppings of the image, different movement of the subject is going to impact that. But now with this AI powered tool where it's figuring out the different sky in each photo. It's figuring out how the subjects move in each image. You're now able to very powerfully copy these adjustment settings across multiple images. So this right here is magic. This is a game changer for portrait and wedding photographers who are editing big batches of images. So what do you think of the new updates? I'd love to know your thoughts. Drop them below and let me know if you have any questions or any areas that you'd like me to dive deeper on and I may share them in a future video in this series. If you enjoyed this, be sure to give it a thumbs up and tap that subscribe button or share this out with a friend. Your support means the world to me and I can't wait to catch you in the next video.